I thought I would uh, make this short video to explain some of the things that I use to help locate these benchmarks. This is a typical data sheet from the Coast and Geodetic Survey uh, database. This one is called Flat Top Reset. Now, the original would have been called Flat Top. Sometimes the uh, benchmarks get damaged or stolen and then they go back and they put a new one in and they give it the name Reset. Okay, the PID is the point ID GW2203. This is what you would punch in on, for example, the geocaching uh, website. There's a benchmark database. If you punch in GW2203, it'll pull up this data sheet. Uh, this tells you the state and the county it's located in. In this case, it's in the state of Virginia. The county is Bedford County. And the USGS quadrangle map name is Peaks of Otter 1967. Okay, now another thing you need to take uh, notice is the datum reference. On a lot of my hiking videos, I talk about NAD 27. This one uses NAD 83. So if you're out with your GPS, you would set your GPS datum to NAD 83, and then the coordinates on your GPS will conform to these coordinates. <clears throat> now down here you'll see these are the UTM coordinates of this benchmark, flat top reset. Now the 17 means that I'm in zone 17, UTM zone 17, and then this is the northing in meters, 4,145,952 meters. And the easting is 625,357 meters. Now, on Garmin GPSs, you have to add this leading zero on the easting. So, on a Garmin GPS, for your easting, you would punch in 0625357. Now, this next section down here, this box score section, contains a list of reference objects. So if you are, uh, if your survey instruments are directly on top of this station, flat top reset, these other objects will be these distances and these uh, azimuths or bearings uh, from where, where this benchmark is. So, for example, from this benchmark, there is a reference mark, flat top reference mark 1, North Northeast Bolt. That means it's a one of the old ones. It's a copper bolt driven into a, a drill hole in a rock. Now, the, they give the distances in meters, but I always convert them to feet because I, I think in terms of feet. So this one's eight feet away from flat top reset and the true azimuth is 030 so that's 30 degrees and then the 52 is minutes so let's just call that 31 degrees now that's true that's the true bearing but when you're in the field you'll be using a compass so you need the magnetic bearing now, if you consult this Peaks of Otter quadrangle map, you'll find out that there's nine degrees of western declination between true north and magnetic north. There's nine degrees from here to here. Now, if you have an object that's, say, located over here, and let's say it's five degrees this way, that would be a bearing of five degrees true north. <clears throat> but when you're using a compass, you have to add in this additional nine degrees. So to find this object using a compass, you need to look at a magnetic bearing of 14 degrees. So you have to add nine degrees to all these bearings to get a magnetic bearing. So 30, this is almost 31 degrees plus nine degrees declination okay, is 40 degrees magnetic. And that's for RM1 North Northeast Bolt. 
Now, if you look at this diagram over here, what I did was I said, okay, here's my, here's my benchmark, flat top reset, and here's 8 feet at 40 degrees magnetic right there. RM1 volt. So I'm drawing a diagram, and if you use a protractor like I did to get accurate angles, this thing will actually show you which way to look when you get out in the field. So you do that for all these other reference marks. Now two of them I discarded. This one here <clears throat> is Apple Mountain Fire Tower. That's 9.7 kilometers away, and this purgatory is 15 kilometers away. Those are too far away to be seen currently with all the overgrowth on the top of this mountain. So when, when this thing was originally surveyed, they, they would have cut down the trees and the brush so they could see these objects, but nowadays you, you can't see them. But all these other ones are on the same summit, and they're just a few meters away. So if you draw this diagram for all these different objects, you'll have a map that you can use when you get up to the summit and actually start looking for these. Now, once you actually get to the summit, <clears throat> These, these station descriptions become very important. And I'll just show you a couple. Here's the descriptions from uh, 1934. Now notice it says here that reference mark number three is a standard disk southeast of the station in the top of a prominent rounded rock outcrop. Okay. If, you, if one of these marks is in a prominent rounded rock outcrop, it's going to be above the ground, it's probably not going to be covered with ivy and stuff, and it should be easy to find it. Okay? Now, that is this one right here. Now, let's compare that with the station itself, the benchmark itself. It says, Station is a standard bronze disc set in a small rock flush with the ground. Okay, flush with the ground, those are hard to find because they get covered up with leaves, with dirt, um, <clears throat> all sorts of stuff, you know, falls, falls over across the trail and covers them up over the years. Some of these I've had to dig down, oh, uh, several inches to actually, to actually uncover them. Okay, so that would be this one, flush with the ground, whereas this one is said to be on the top of a prominent rock outcrop. Okay, so when you actually get up to the summit, you need to read these very carefully because these give you a lot of good visual clues as to where to find, where to find these marks. Now, what happened to me on this one was because this was flat with the ground, it was covered up, and I, I, I couldn't find it initially. But the very first one I found was this reference mark number three. This was on top of a rock outcrop, and uh, I saw it right off the bat. Now, notice on my diagram, <clears throat> the bearing from here to here is 25 feet at 129 degrees magnetic. Now that's the that's the bearing if you're if you're if you're standing here, but I don't know where this is, is yet because this is the first one that I found. Okay, well I know if I'm standing there, it's 25 feet back to here, but it, but the bearing you have to add 180 degrees to it to get the bearing standing here. So if you add 180 degrees, that's 309 degrees. So if you stand here and dial in 309 degrees of compass bearing and look this way, this will tell you where to go search in this area here. Okay, now once you find <clears throat> this one, you can, you can start using this, uh, this diagram directly. You can use these distances and these angles, but as you, as you, if you're just wandering around like, for example, I found this one first, then I found this one, then I found this one, okay, and then all three of these helped me narrow my search on this one, and finally I found this one. It was, it was basically covered up. Okay, so I hope this information helps you when you go out into the field 
looking for these uh, survey benchmarks.